Good morning, and welcome to worship here at the Trinitarian Congregational Church. I'm Reverend Bernie Hinckley, and I'm glad that you have joined us either in person or online. Thank you for being here. It's such an honor and privilege to have you with us. Just two quick announcements for, or actually three for everyone, that um, hopefully you uh, know today at 4 p.m. to meet here at the church. If you'd like to go Christmas caroling and spread some Christmas joy to people within our church community. So I hope you can join us here at 4 p.m. for that. Also on uh, Christmas Eve, we'll have one Christmas Eve service starting at 8 p.m. The choir and the bell choir will be there. And then also uh, one last thing for today, it is due today, but we have our flower to flower donation forms. Uh, so please, if you haven't filled those out, please get them in by the end of the day. Uh, you can either get a poinsettia for Christmas Eve or make a non-perishable food donation to help combat those who are in need of uh, food uh, throughout the year. So thank you for your generosity and support to all these programs. And now let us come as we worship and remember that God makes room for all of us, whether this is our first time here or we've been here many times before, that we are welcomed here, that if we believe a lot, a little, or not at all, that we are welcomed here. For as our denomination, the United Church of Christ says, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcomed here. So let us now begin this fourth Sunday of Advent by the lighting of the candle of love, and let us join responsibly as it is printed in the bulletin. We light one candle for love. Because the world is broken, the wait is long, but love never ends. Love faithfully goes about the work of casting out fear, speaking truth, healing the deepest wounds, crossing the divide from this world to the next and back again. Here I am, she whispers, the servant of the Lord. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ is with us.
the gospel lesson this morning is from the gospel according to Luke in chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. And before this was written, the preceding verses foretold of the birth of John the Baptist to Zechariah and Elizabeth, and then the birth of Jesus was foretold to Mary, Jesus' mom. And so now we pick up the gospel reading, the third gospel, third book of the New Testament, with this visit of Mary and Elizabeth. So let us listen and may God speak to us in the reading and the hearing of these words. So in those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted her cousin Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child in her womb leapt with joy. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt with joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for God has looked with favor upon the lowliness of God's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God. From generation to generation, God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Jacob and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. May the Lord's blessings be added to our hearing and understanding of these words for our day. The song of Mary that we hear today is a probably is a part of scripture that we Protestants overlook sometimes to our own peril, about the joy of the birth, about the song of Mary, and about what she understands this birth to mean for her. But before I say any more about that, think about for a moment, we're just blessed. We were just blessed by hearing the choir sing, and how often I hear about the wonders and the beauty of the music program, and I always marvel that music is a wonderful, wonderful gift that we have here at the church, but also what music means to us probably as individuals. It's always interesting that what I was thinking about the other day and throughout this last week as uh, dealing with some health issues for my mom, that I found myself singing the old familiar hymns that I grew up with. Specifically, Christ the Lord is risen today. But as I thought about it, when the fun of COVID began, almost two years ago, that I found in those first six to seven weeks that I was singing a lot of the hymns that I grew up with because of the comfort, because of what else did I know what to do, because there was nothing else that spoke to me. But in singing the hymns, God's presence was real and being like, oh, okay, I get this. And so I understand all those times that, and I say this, ag to church, 
in hearing those hymns, but those hymns are now the things that feed me. And then also I look in my faith life and also my, my own musical life. If you ever were to listen to music with me, I'm about as eclectic as one person can get. My favorite, Eric Clapton, Zach Brown, Elvis Presley. But I also like, and I say this, not the stuff that my children listen to, but there are some what I call rap from the 80s and the 90s. Classic artists like Tupac who spoke out about things that were going on in the African-American community that still resonate today. I listen to the blues because, well, who doesn't like a good blues rift? And if you don't, go listen to Robert Johnson. Go listen to jazz and the spirit. So music is this gift that we have been given throughout the ages. Music is one of those things that if you hear a song, I bet you, I bet you that all of a sudden there will be memories of what that song means. You can think of a time when you were there. And here in the church, I know like my two favorite times here are Christmas and Easter for singing the Christmas songs, like O Come All You Faithful. Easter morning, Christ the Lord is risen today. Those are songs that when you hear the body singing it together, that sometimes I stop and just listen. Just listen to the voices blending. And it's interesting, there are some people here who say, well, I can't sing. And it's like, no, no, you can sing. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Never says anything about being in tune or on key. Just make a joyful noise a song. But as we, as I listen to songs and I listen to lyrics, and it's also interesting, um, for those of you who are younger than, um, we'll say 20, though I did hear yesterday, waiting in line, someone said, oh, I'm about to turn 22, I'm so old. I never laughed so hard, so long, out loud. But they will never know the pain of singing the wrong lyrics to the songs because that's what we thought. We have our devices, we can follow along, and how many times have I found, I was like, that's the lyric? Really? But if we do listen to the songs, songs that we grew up with, and like I, I think of The Doors, like Jim Morrison and that group, some of the songs they wrote were in protest to some of the things that were happening in society that Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I could go on and on, but they're all songs of people singing about what is happening in society. And some of those songs that we perhaps, they put to a beat and we're like, oh, that sounds, hey, that sounds catchy, that sounds happy, but when you listen to the lyrics, you're like, ooh, that's kind of deep, maybe disturbing. And we hear today in this passage of scripture from Mary that she is told that she's visited by an angel saying, God's son. And she ponders what this means. So, what does she do? She goes and visits a relative, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth's husband just happens to work as a priest, Zechariah. Because believe the good news about Elizabeth being pregnant was struck mute. Maybe every woman's dream, the husband to be quiet for a prolonged period of time. I don't know. But when Mary calls on Elizabeth, it says that the baby in Elizabeth's womb leapt with joy, and she is so overcome, and she says, what is this great thing that the mother of my Lord has come to me. But it's then Mary who breaks out into song. It says there in scripture, Mary's song. And in the song, if we listen to it, it's almost like Mary's just a little bit full of herself. You know, like, I understand. Like, it's, it's interesting for me as a, as a male. Like, it's always interesting to see women who are pregnant because I always see this glow about them. And I don't know that I'm envious, but 
there's something about a beauty about what they're doing. Now, I know, I don't know squat about being pregnant, don't want to know anything about being pregnant, right? But I've been th- seen the journey up close twice. But Mary says, you know, God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. And surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Whoa, those are big words. That I'll be blessed. Generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me and holy is God's name. But as she goes on, she names all the things that God has already done. That God has already done for the people of Israel. God heard their songs, their songs of affliction when they were in Egypt, and God responded and set them free. And it's always interesting that as we go through the scriptures, even the Old Testament to the New Testament, God has a way of taking those who may be what we think are successful and bringing them down, And those who we consider lowly, down and out, undesirable, God lifts up. One of the mistakes that we often make in faith, and when we hear a song such as Mary's, is we forget that there is a radical politicalness to it. Not left versus right, but more of those in power and those who have no power. For if we remember, Mary was just a country girl, low class, low status. But yet this is who God chooses to come to. And think about that for a moment, that God chooses to come to someone who has no power, no station, perhaps It's day by day for Mary and for Joseph, day by day, that the baby that is about to be born is not being born into a palatial palace where there will be the best health care, that this baby is born to the poorest of the poor, that God entrusts God's self to these people. And as is in in any of our stations in life, that as we think about the things that are happening perhaps now or in the past or perhaps even in the future, that when I hear songs, songs of hope and nurture, that we can hear in those songs that we sing, whether they be sacred religious texts or pop texts, that we yearn for the day when all will be right. And when I mean all will be right, not that those who have done wrong get their comeuppance, though I do have a few people I wish a few things upon, but I'm just being honest. But that we stop and we think about in this holiday season, as we as a congregation have done, we have tried our best to help five families to have some light and love and joy. But what does that mean so that all people might have enough and live lives of love. So when we hear this song of Mary, let us not dismiss it as just a woman being proud to be pregnant, but of realizing of God's mighty power, that it is God who comes to us and sets us free so that we may have new life. When I talk about um, One of the confirmands this year said to me, I don't understand what it means to have a savior. And I said, we have a savior who saves us from falling into a way of life that is about me, me, me. That God, through Jesus, reorients us to see her, him, them, they, others, black, poor, gay, straight, Hispanic, Latino, you name it. That when we see them, that we see them as people made in God's image. That when we see them, 
They too are worthy of God's love just as we are worthy of God's love. And so Mary's song is a song that reminds us about the radicalness of God's power and about what we celebrate when we gather again on Christmas Eve to announce to the world the birth of Jesus. That we as prisoners, that we as a world who are prisoners to a system of socioeconomic military and technology are set free boy to go forth and to share the song of God's love for one and for all. And so may the song of Mary give us pause. May it feed us and may it help us hear not only of God's call for ourselves, but may it help us tune into the other songs that we hear, songs of freedom and of joy and of love and of God's love. May we be set free to serve this babe in Bethlehem whose birth we come to celebrate. Let us now listen to and hum along to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And this morning we come to offer our response to God's love and to thank you for your response to God's love through the ongoing financial support to the ministries here at the Trinitarian Congregational Church. Thank you for that support. There are many ways you can give, either here in person or you may go online and give through uh, our website or through an app. Please thank you for your support during these times. And now let us come and... Come to God in a moment of prayer where we may hear God's voice, offer prayers, and as we hear God's voice, may we respond in hope and in love. Let us pray. O God of the prophets and the truth-tellers, the great voice of truth who speaks through unexpected voices, a great power of the universe who works mighty deeds from fragile possibilities. We gather once again to know your presence and to listen for your still speaking voice. We listen in your presence. We listen for you. Let our listening reach to hear the voice of a young Mary. Let us listen for her voice, the voice of an adolescent girl in an insignificant village in a marginal province far from the centers of power. Extend our listening to hear her where she may be speaking today. 
perhaps an adolescent girl in a village in rural China whose parents really wanted a boy, a girl in a remote native village in Latin America leading the singing in a small church, a 14-year-old working for a tiny wage in a crowded factory somewhere making our high-priced running shoes, a 15-year-old helping her village in Africa recover from civil war, a high school student in the U.S. resisting a culture of violence daily to attend school. Extend our listening, God, to hear the song of truth and hope you are putting in our mouths. Extend our listening, God, to sense the motion of a future you are moving in our midst and in their midst, a future world put right. Extend our listening, God, that we may receive and affirm and listen with the eager ears of elderly Elizabeth, wise with years of waiting. Let us listen fully and deeply for the hope you are preparing. Let us greet your hope with Elizabeth's joy greeting Mary. Let us feel the future moving in us as well. Let us listen fully and deeply for the hope you are preparing in us. Let us listen deeply to your word and fully to the hope that you place around us and in us each and every day. Extend our listening to the deepest reaches of our own souls. Extend our listening through the cares that each of us brings on our hearts this day. Extend our listening through the financial worries, the shopping, and the preoccupations with our health, our concern for loved ones whose lives are straying out of control, our angers and aggravations, our being overburdened with activity. Extend our listening into all that we bring today to hear there the transforming truth about your love. Extend our listening until we listen with all that we are, our whole beings. Extend our listening until we hear with your whole voice. Extend our listening until we become the voice that speaks as Mary to say, my soul magnifies God and my spirit rejoices. May the listening of our souls enlarge your listening until we truly hear you from unexpected places in the farthest reaches of the earth in the most remote territories of our own souls. Extend our listening that we may magnify you, O gracious God. Now hear us as we pray together, as Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now at this time I would invite those who wish in mind, body, or spirit to rise and to help us sing two verses of Joy to the World as printed in the bulletin.
As our worship service comes to a close, may our service to the risen Christ continue. And may we go forth from this place singing a song of joy of God's love for you, for me, and for all people wherever we go. May we hear the melodic tunes of God in the whispers of a young child, in the chirping of the birds, in the joy and the hustle and the bustle. May we hear it in the weeping, in the crying, in the hurt and the pain. But may we bring the light of God's love wherever we go. May we let that light shine into the darkness and fill ourselves and others with hope of God's love that we've come to celebrate. Go and sing the song of God's love to this world. Amen and amen. Thank you.